Thank you. I now have the pleasure of requesting our director, NDPGR, Dr. Kuldeep Singh, who is also the Vice President of ISPGR, to make his opening remarks and also highlight the contributions of Dr. D.S. Atwan. Thank you, Dr. Kavita. Good afternoon. It's my proud privilege to welcome you all for the second Dalbagh Singh Atwal Memorial Lecture. In fact, uh, many things do not come out in history generally until individuals make it to happen. We at PAU knew Dr. Thwal very well, which I will tell you a little bit uh, later. But nobody knew his association with NDPGR until Dr. Paroda shared those moments with all of us. And it was on his initiative because he valued the contributions made by Dr. Thwalt and the PGR that this memorial lecture was initiated and the first lecture was held in 2018, which is a biannual activity. Uh, sir, we are thankful to you. You are a walking encyclopedia uh, and keep on telling all these things to us. You have been instrumental in bringing Dr. Gurdev Singh Kush as the first speaker of this lecture series. And uh, it's your initiative this year again that you made Dr. Bhava to agree for coming to the second DS Atwal Memorial Lecture. As president of the society, we are grateful to you all, you for making all these things happen. Dr. Bhava, you don't know how happy we were when you said yes to us, that yes, you are ready to be the second speaker for DS Atwal Memorial lecture and I'm sure you have also personally associated with Dr. Paul as was Dr. As is Dr. Kush associated with him. So the first two speakers of the series are the ones who know Dr. Paul very <coughs> closely. Dr. Gautam sir, thank you very much for extending your program from Ahmedabad to NDPGR and we knew you had a plan of earlier, moving early, but thank you for being with us this afternoon. Your presence here makes us all smile. Because that's all your charismatic attitude approach towards individuals that makes us all very happy when you are at NDPGR. All my colleagues here, all the elders here who founded NDPGR, we welcome you all here to this second GS of Card Memorial Lecture. I welcome everyone, all the faculty members, staff members, students, such fellows of NDPGR. So the timing slightly happened that uh, due to certain meetings of especially the SRB, the council became, activities became very, very hectic for the Director General and uh, he could not really make uh, to come here because EFC is already sort of uh, on head for all of us there. So that meeting was finalized and I think uh, we couldn't have the people from the council here. Otherwise, uh, we had the blessings and the greetings from Dr. Uh, Mahapatra Sahib for holding this meeting. And in fact, our DDG crops also joined only last week, Dr. Tia Sharma because this was the meeting which was organized which was held by the DG. So most of the DDGs and ADGs uh, from the council are not able to join us uh, here today. I've been given the pleasant responsibility to share with you a brief account of Dr. D.S. Atwal. In fact, in the first lecture, his 
nephew was here and he gave a very sweet memory of him. And I can tell you a simple story of uh, before I introduced Atatwal, what we had heard as the students. There were a series of students, including Dr. B.S. Dino, who were doing masters that time at PA, PAU when Dr. Atwal was heading the division of land bidding there. And Dr. Atwal's nephew was also there. So they all got delayed, their master's thesis got delayed. So everybody was, okay, we had sabka bhatija hai to sabko ho jayega. And when it came to the time of admissions, he said, gentlemen, sorry, you are all late. And hence, you cannot be admitted to this session of the, this academic session. You may wait until next year. And so that was a sort of darkness for everyone, but the good thing happened to them that all of them joined IEL. If Dr. Thal had not taken the decision, none of them would have joined IERI. So they were all toppers, good people at that time. They all came to IERI and continued their PhD there. So that was the strictness of Dr. Thal. Dr. Thal was born in now Pakistan which is a village called as Chak 90. And he did his basic education from Lalpur and joined BSA Agriculture in the Lalpur College, which was one of the five colleges established right from the beginning of the 19th century, 20th century in India. Uh, so he did his schooling from there and joined BSA Agriculture as well. But due to partition, they had to move. And that college was established in Amritsar. So he got his degree BSc Agriculture from, it was with Punjab University at that time. So he got his BSc Agriculture degree from Punjab University. But uh, this, this college was based at Amritsar. He was a topper. At that time, the press was more active in Ambala rather than, it was Lahore. And then Ambala, then Delhi, that was the sort of cities, the cities which were active in uh, education and other things. So his name appeared in the, all the newspapers of North India when Dr. Thwal did talk with BSc Agriculture. He joined Punjab Agriculture uh, Agri Department for a while and then he got uh, admission for an integrated PhD course in University of Sydney where he completed his PhD and joined back at PA Yudhana. So that was the time when Green Revolution was happening, was making, and he was an important part of this whole team that really initially evaluated all the cement material of wheat in India. So at PAU, he was one who was uh, heading them, heading the whole group. And it was not only this uh, material which came directly, but subsequent varieties, because initial varieties, initial germplasm, which came from cement, was the red colored beets, which were not acceptable to the consumers. But two varieties, which immediately, especially the one which is called as Kalyan Sona. So Kalyan, he named after the name of the village which, where they settled after the partition. So that was, that came as very popular variety, Kalyan Sona. We know Sonali and Kalyan are two important varieties of that time. So that's definitely the history. He, uh, and of course, uh, he was working on millets as well because the number of the faculty there was very less at that time. People were working on two crops at least, summer crop and a winter crop. So winter it was wheat and summer it was the millets where he was the first person to use the male sterility for development of the hybrids and the first commercial hybrid of pearl millet in the world was the one developed by Dr. D.S. Athwar. <clears throat> so, having bought in these two revolutions, he moved to Erie, where he was a DDG research. And in fact, uh, it's his tenure that uh, emphasis from breeding, along with breeding, the emphasis was given on the basic research as well. So he laid basically the foundation of studying the genetics of all the biotic stresses, which later on Dr. Kush continued in a longer way, bigger way. And that's what we know even is the contribution now. 
and for all this what he did in India, he was conferred with a large number of awards, the Shanti Swaroop Award, Punjab Farmers Gold Medal for Outstanding Contribution to Punjab Agriculture, and Padma Bhushan Award by the President of India. That was in 1975. This is what everyone knows because these things are documented somewhere, once here or there. What we didn't know that why MDPGR has really taken initiative for him to, to be honored. So after Erie, he shifted to US where he joined the Windrock International. And I think that the, the thing started from there. And you may hear from Dr. Parada the personal touch of those things. But what we know from him that it was his leadership, because he became the vice president of Wind Rock, and it was under his leadership <clears throat> from the Wind Rock who really facilitated U.S. aid, and the leadership from India was from Dr. Aras Paroda. That is, two people bought around twenty-four million dollars that time, and that is what was invested into the facility where we are sitting today is one of the world's best facility. We, we have no doubt in saying that. So I will not speak much about this one, but these were the contributions. And I will leave a little more for Dr. Paroda, because when he will say, that will be his personal touch uh, onto this one. But personally, we had an opportunity to meet uh, Krathwal not many times, because uh, he was not traveling too much later on. But it was uh, probably the Golden Jubilee of the PAU, when we were awarded the degrees, the three top people of the world, Dr. Borlaug, Dr. Rathwal, and Dr. Kush, they were there in that convocation where we were conferred the degrees of the masters uh, in plant building. And that was the time when we heard them personally and listened to his uh, uh, values and what we keep on listening from others that he will pick up the bicycle at 7 in the morning, by 7.15 he will be in the field during summer days as well when he was working on Bajra and by 8 o'clock during winter, when, uh, winter days when he was working in wheat. So by 10.30 or so, he will complete all his activities in the field, will go home, fresh up, change and then come to go to the department. Because he used to be a very well-dressed person. If you see any of his pictures, he was very well-dressed. But whenever he was in the field, he would always go in the casuals, on his bicycle, work for four hours in the field before coming to bed. So those were some of the things which we tried to learn, appreciate what uh, Dr. Paul was doing at PA. With these little words, I thank you and welcome you again to this second DS of Paul Memorial Lecture. Thank you. Thank you, sir.